Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, name is Manik Jolly. Mero Nepali steward dekhi Ramro cha, but I'll stick to English. And uh, this is the name of my startup, which I have recently started in Singapore. It's been incubated by the Singapore Government uh, Sustainable and Energy Association of Singapore. The aim is to build microgrids. That is all I propose. So in the beginning, I'd like to say that discussion over cost per kilowatt hour is something that I don't propose because it is something which is an unending debate. And secondly, I do not, uh, I very strongly oppose that the effort to build a microgrid to give domestic electricity is not right. If you have to build microgrids, it should run industry. So this is just a like a microgrids that we built. I'll just quickly run over what I want to propose that what a microgrid means is like if every house should have at least 70 to 100 watts of electricity, they should get it when they want. It can be, it should be able to run uh, industry, micro industry in the village. The aim is if you're talking of rural development and growth and everything, it should give boost to the economy. Just by bringing light to houses, it doesn't do that. So we as enablers, as somebody said, uh, have to get the change coming into the villages, get that industry moving. So on technology side, it is written. I don't want to waste any, everybody's time reading that over. You can read it. I think when we talk of entrepreneurs, <clears throat> when we talk of scaling businesses, the only thing that everybody wants to know is cost. Rest, everything is immaterial. We can talk, keep talking about social impact and this and that. If we can give them electricity, they are happy. And if they, they can pay us back, we'll be happy. So if we can understand cost, I think that's the most important thing. So one thing I definitely know that uh, subsidy and grant is a very, very critical factor at this stage. The solar cost, especially battery backed, has not reached there where we can, we are able to, we can afford to give electricity at night, especially uh, storage solution and recover our money. So let's take it this way that this microgrid business is just taking off and like any other business, it needs a little push from the government in forms of subsidies or grants or international organization or multilaterals. There's nothing wrong in it. We all need to learn to walk. Somebody has to hold a hand. So I, I, I do not have any problems in accepting that fact that as on date, we need these grants to come in. But the change that I can I want to say now is, till now all these projects were built by 100% grant funding. Somebody used to come from outside, build a couple of microgrids for villages. The private sector has to keep working on the gap funding. Today I can definitely say that I can invest 60% into a microgrid, even maybe 65, and recover my money, and keep the microgrid operational, if somebody can take care of the 30-35%, right? couple of years back, even that was not possible. So while we are closing the gap, I, uh, slowly, I'm sure a day will come, couple of years ahead, that these could be purely privately funded. This, I, I really want to run, you, run people through this, that microgrids, especially why identification of geographies, I've always keep on, I always keep on top is that there is no generic answer to creating microgrids in a village. Every geography has its own requirement in terms of uh, what industry can take off there, what is the requirement of villages, how's the sun, weather, everything. So depending on that, this is the process that I think should be followed when any entrepreneur wants to get into a, creating a microgrid with transmission networks and provide electricity, right? This is, the, uh, this is a snapshot of the business model that I uh, propose. I have not gone into the numbers here because uh, that's my secret. <laughs> so. I'll keep it to that, that more, that grid is the name of my company. If I'm in the center, the first thing is there's a bank which can enter in debt plus equity combination. Then there is a government support. So I, I do not ask for cash support from government. Uh, like my previous speaker just said, it will be fantastic of government if they start building transmission networks and the cost of the entire project comes down. So I, my capital cost automatically comes down. India, they are doing a lot of work in Rajiv Gandhi, Vidyuti Karan Yojana, but they still don't have touch points where we can feed into it. We still don't know if go to a village, can we tap into the national grid? So that link is missing. So if in microgrids, government has already said we will give you subsidy, rather than giving the subsidy, they say we'll take care of the transmission. It serves two purposes. One, one it gets my capital cost down. And secondly, the biggest thing is you are creating national infrastructure. 
like Mr. Patra was speaking earlier, he was saying, uh, I, I tend to disagree a little here. Like uh, the underground network you are building, and you say when government comes, government can connect to that grid. It will not be able to. It has to be G government of India, in this case India, regulated transmission network that the government will connect to. They will not just connect to anything. Part two, even if they connect to, and you are saying, they'll start paying you for the electricity that is running on your transmission that you have created. Basically, you're talking of wheeling charges. Wheeling charges will not get your money back. Third, what happens to the electricity that you are generating? So I think as an entrepreneur, my biggest threat is not, I will not get my, get my money back. It's a proven fact, I'm sure. If I create electricity, people will pay money. I have no doubts about it. Recovery will never be my issue. My problem is, after two years when the girl, because it is inhuman that I keep these people limited to 60 watts all their lives. At some time, government has to come with the grid and give them pumps and motors and everything. Fine, I can build a microgrid to run industry. But at some time, government has to act like government and they come with national grid. What happens to my plant? Because then villagers will not take my 60 watts, they'll take the full. So the, I'm very happy that uh, at least here, it's a government effort and government is in picture. Because at some places it can happen that I create a microgrid and the national grid reaches and I'm finished. I don't know what to do with the, my asset. So that assurance is required from the government that if you are creating these microgrids, the moment we reach there, there will be a PPA between us. We'll purchase your power. And that will be on the rates that are defined on the day projects are set up. So this is the dialogue which the entrepreneur and the governments need to have. So anyway, coming back to this. So this funding comes to it and investment side, uh, 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 there was some, uh, I think, uh, gentleman from Minda, uh, you were saying that 20-30% uh, comes from village local entrepreneur. I keep it to 0.5 to 1% only because the costs are too high. I'm unable to find a villager who can come with 20-30%. So my number is, even if you can come with 1%, that's a big enough stake for him to stay involved in the project. So that's the only appraisal here. Right. So uh, as a, once I've received the investment, I give an EPC and o &M contract to somebody who, who is expert in this. I am not. I am a project developer and an entrepreneur who runs the microgrids. The microgrids gives energy to the anchor load, which is my key thing. I'll come back. I'll come in next slides. I'll dis discuss more about this. The anchor load guy who is a village level entrepreneur, <clears throat> the asset that flour mill or a milk chiller or a uh, I'm, uh, whatever we, I'm creating has to go on his books because if it is not on his books and I have invested and I still keep it with me, the revenue that is coming in is not right. So I have to earn tariff from him to show profitability of my project. In that cycle, he ends up, he will keep paying the EMI for what the loan he has taken. On the domestic, 5% of my project will cater for domestic electricity which is minimal 60, 70, 100 uh, watts, whatever it is. Uh, and the revenue will be done by the village level entrepreneur who charges the same model that Mr. Gandhi was talking about, uh, 15 to 20% premium over what has been done. So basically, uh, this is how I uh, work. My, my role in this entire thing, will technology will be, I have to identify the best EPC guy who does it in best cost, quality experience, the battery bank identification is really critical. You go with lead acid or you go with newer batteries which have 10-year warranties. Maintenance is a big issue. Battery which is five years supposed can die in two years because people don't know how to maintain it. So your entire plant is supposed to give electricity at night and if you are not focused on battery, it will die a uh, premature death. Business models, of course, is my problem. Anchor load. So anchor load, uh, it's... Uh, I've heard people saying to give financial economic growth to the village, create anchor load. They'll not come up. Even if you, even if you give, there's so much electricity in our houses. How many of us have set up flour mills to earn more profit, right? It doesn't happen. You have to, if, if you are trying to do this, you will have to go into the village with a milk chiller. Cre call a guy that you will run this for me and you are getting paid this way. You have to create that opportunity.